Alright, how's it going? So in this video I'm going to go through each of the default picture modes. Um, so I did a complete factory reset again and only made basic adjustments just to what you would expect for these different modes. So let me go over to what I started with with cinema. So let's say you want to use cinema mode for nighttime viewing and this is all SDR. So that would be negative 2 gamma to get to uh, 2.4. Pretty much leave everything the same, turn off all the enhancements and processing features. Peak luminance is off because if you're nighttime viewing and you have this off and brightness is at max, that will put you at 100 nits. Um, actually it will be a little bit under because under motion I do have clearness to 1. Uh, that will drop it just a little bit under 100 nits. Um, clarity, so every, everything's just off. So for the measurements, uh, nothing's been done. And because I did a factory reset, I'm back to you know 10 point here. I'll unlock the 20 point later. So we have this one for out of the box, pretty much nighttime. Then we have game mode. As I was scrolling through here, peak luminance was at medium, but I did change it to high before testing. And again, everything's just turned off using color temperature expert one, because it should be the most accurate out of the box. Now the only one I left the processing stuff on is IMAX enhanced, just because I want to see with this one out of the box, like the whole point of this picture mode is that it's supposed to be like filmmaker where it's set up already. I just want to see what this measures at just as it is out of the box if someone were to turn it on and not use it kind of like the filmmaker mode on LG and then for custom this is what we would be comparing IMAX to because both of these the gamma is at zero which would measure around 2.2 and since this would be for more uh, daytime viewing I have peak luminance on medium uh, let me see what IMAX puts that at <clears throat> yeah medium it also has excuse me <clears throat> contrast enhancer on medium um, live color on low so all that stuff is gonna uh, mess with the accuracy a bit so I just want to see how much it does but anyway so for custom daytime viewing gamma zero everything pretty much normal peak luminance at medium um, so it's not overly bright uh, you can put it on high if you're in a bright room but you know, these aren't like recommended settings, these are just very basic um, just to get a feel for how accurate these different modes are out of the box. This is unlimited because my pattern generator uh, has to be unlimited. Um, Alright, so I have the meter profiled and now I'm going to measure each of these modes and let you know how they measure out. So um, I would use D65, but the default of the television is not to target D65. So I'm going to use Sony's white point and measure at that. So, All right, here is the custom mode, measuring for a gamma of 2.2 with the modified Judd offset white point. And with peak luminance at medium and black frame insertion to 1, uh, 240 nits and again this is SDR so that's still pretty bright for SDR and we can go brighter with high uh, I just set it to high so we'll see what we get All right, 315 and again that's with black frame insertion enabled if we disable black frame insertion, max SDR luminance in a accurate setting is 400. All right, and this is the purely out of the box IMAX enhanced mode. And it was 235 nits.
So now I'm going to disable the dynamic contrast and uh, live color and a couple things and just see if it gets even more accurate with some minor adjustments. Alright, and here is the IMAX mode with the few adjustments and it's quite interesting because the gamma tracking has a dip now in the mid-range so it seems that the advanced contrast enhancer being on a default was raising that mid-range to flatten it out for 2.2 and then here on the high end it is around 2.2 luminance pretty much the same so now let me check uh, game mode and then we have cinema mode left alright now here is game mode with peak luminance on high and at 2.2 gamma there is a bit of a raise here so I would think dropping that to negative one might be good you can see excellent color accuracy errors of 1.7 2.2, 1.4, 1 1.4, 0 0.9, and our luminance in SDR game mode, peak luminance at high is 367. Alright, now I'm going to try cinema mode. Uh, just to keep everything the same, going for 2.2, I'm going to bump the gamma up to zero, um, but in night movie watching, it probably should be at negative two. All right, now here is cinema mode. Again, I did raise the gamma to keep measuring 2.2 to keep it consistent with the other results. Uh, and you can see it is a little bit low through most of the range. I think cinema mode just run a little bit darker than other modes. Surprisingly though, the color accuracy is a little bit worse in this mode for some reason. And then as far as luminance, like I said, with the brightness on max, the uh, BFI at 1, and peak luminance off. It's actually a little bit higher than uh, what I had measured previously, but that may just be this mode, or uh, that the, because you know, more time on the TV and it's broken a little bit more, but anyway, you still get around 100 nits, so that's good for nighttime SDR movie viewing. And that's the main picture modes that matter for this TV. Now I'm going to go through and make adjustments to try and dial them all in as best as possible without having to get into advanced settings. Alright, dropping the gamma down to negative 2 and retesting at 2.4. And you can see cinema mode is a lot better. And that's the only change that was made and even dropped the color errors to be way better. And this show cinema mode really should only be used for nighttime viewing. Alright, setting the gamma to negative one on custom. Definitely smooth that out for 2.2. And all, a lot of the color errors are very low now. So now just see if I can lower this red line a little bit and the blue line just a tiny bit. But again, this is for modified Judd, not D65. And now we're getting really close. All I did was turn the red gain down two clicks and blue gain down one click. And everything follows this line very nicely, and that would pretty much be good enough. If you are okay with the modified Judd offset that Sony uses for the white point, and you weren't trying to get to D65. So, if you see white images on the TV and you think they look white to you, and the um, skin tones and all that look good to you and you're fine with modified Judd offset then that's pretty much all you would need to have a really nice RGB balance here max air 1.1 average 0.9 all the colors look pretty good um, I'm gonna try knocking the red down one more click to see if it clears this part right here but I don't want to affect anything down here but because it's the gain which is the high end, I think one more negative click on red should flatten that out. So let me give that a try. Alright, and there we go. One more down click on the red gain. Dropped that 
a little bit of red in the high end. Now our average error is 0 0.6, max is 1. And the color errors, let's see, we got a 1 1.6, 1 1.7, 1.7, 1 1.8, 2. So everything's looking very, very good. So just a quick rundown. <clears throat> we are in custom mode. Focus. There we go. Again, we're at negative one gamma, which is tracking 2.2. And again, this is for custom mode. Black level still at 50. You can turn the contrast up to 93 if you want to, but I wouldn't go any higher where it can clip. Peak luminance is currently at medium. You can set that to high if you wish. I think medium is bright enough. This is for daytime uh, TV viewing mostly. Reality creation, you can turn this on. I would recommend just putting it at auto, or if you're going to use manual, keep it under 20. Smooth gradation, you can keep it off or put it to low. I'm just keeping everything off while I'm still testing. For the motion, again, I've been using clearness at 1 just to get a little extra motion, motion at resolution. Again, don't set yours to limited, leave it at auto. This is just for the calibration. And the only advanced settings changed was here under advanced color temperature basic. We're at negative three red, negative one blue, and that is it. Again, this is for the modified Judd offset white point, not for D65. For D65, we would have to pull the blue down a lot more. And to show you what that looks like, I believe I can just change the white point and it will change this chart. So let me uh, try this really quickly. So if we go back to setup and we change this to D65 and then we go back to our measurement. Yep. So here you can see the difference between modified Judd and D65. Red and green is very, very similar. The only difference is you have a lot more blue push on modified Judd. So if we pull that blue gain down to probably negative eight or so, then you would be at D65. If we put this back. can see that and if we come here really quick let me run this for color temperature you can see the balance is nice the temperature is at 7000 so at D65 you'd be at 6500 so that's kind of the main difference is it's just about 500 degrees higher to give a little bit more of a blue push to whites. So it just depends on what you like. So, again, this looks very, very good. Very minimal changes. And this brings up the point of do you need a calibration? And when it's this easy to get results of this good, I would say no. And again, if you do want D65, all we'd have to do is just change the blue gain and it would look very similar to this. So a calibration will get you a little bit better, but not very much. All right, um, so this covers the daytime viewing. I'll uh, try to do something similar for nighttime and gaming. Um, and then for HDR and Dolby Vision, you don't have to really do anything because it will use your SDR settings uh, for its algorithm to uh, do its own HDR and Dolby Vision. Like you can't 
calibrate HDR and Dolby Vision with Sony um, using Calman. So just uh, that's pretty much all you got to do. All right, and now you can see using D65. Got this flattened out. And I had a video previously on this about setting the red gain to negative 3 and the blue gain to negative 6. Um, well, now that the meter is profiled, pretty much verified that, except I did drop the blue down to negative 7 just to smooth it out a little bit more. But anything in that range, I mean, there is panel variance. So negative 3 on the red, negative 7, maybe negative 8 on the blue should put you right at D65 and... And all our errors are below 2, yep, nothing above 2 for the color. And the grayscale is all very low, below 1. Alright, so now I'm going to do some brightness measurements. Then I'm going to go into more advanced stuff and using the service menu white balance controls. And should be able to get a brightness bump from using those controls. So, but for right now, if you just wanted very easy settings and just a little verification that you can get near calibrated results very easily, uh, this is that. So, thanks for watching. Look out for the next video in this series. And have a good one.